Yeah, this is interesting. In the Valley, the state's largest tiny home community for people experiencing homelessness has opened in North Hollywood. City officials were on hand to ring in the city's latest housing development. Listen. There's services on site, meals are served on site, uh, there's hygiene, there's showers, there's bathrooms, there's laundry facilities. This is a moment of a lot of hope for me. And I know it doesn't feel like that when you drive through the city because people say the city looks dirty, uh, and people are encamped everywhere. Well, especially there. But to me, it is a moment of deep hope because I know the numbers and I know the commitment and I know the team that is here. There are 103 units at the site in Alexandria Park. The tiny homes are 64 square feet each. They've got two beds each, heating and air conditioning, a small desk, and door locks. They cost about eight grand each to build. Bathrooms and showers are in separate trailers. A similar but smaller community was opened along Chandler Boulevard in North Hollywood back in February. Eight grand. Uh, my my, uh, I'm, that's great. They're trying to figure out you know a solution to this uh, very controversial problem. My my thing is, the, the space is so small. You can't really spend the whole day there. You're for sure just sleeping there, and that's about it. Um, oh, sorry. Um, of all the problems you could have had with this. No, 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 you know, let me finish. It's, uh, all they're doing is sleeping there, right? Um, what are they doing the rest of the day? Are they back in like in the streets? Are they still out there panhandling? Or uh, are they uh, the people who are in charge of these sites helping uh, these people, people um, find jobs or find extracurricular activities to spend their time? Or are they in these uh, little huts doing Robert, stuff that might not- Robert, you were mentioning in other, like in oh, the South Bay, there, there are places that put, restrictions on the people who live in those areas yeah uh, like there's a sudden there's certain like living facilities like this where you can't smoke in there you can't even smoke cigarettes you can't drink uh, let alone do drugs and so if there's addicts in these places they might not want to stay in these places in these little huts again um because of the fact that that's not going to be allowed so right. I, I just yeah. i don't know i mean it goes back to the you know the argument that you can't help somebody that doesn't want to be helped mm. you know so i mean you can't force anybody into these things and if they, like you said, aren't into that idea of being in a small space and not being able to do those things, then they won't go. But it's those who ne really need it and want a place to sleep and stay and shower and bathe, yeah, uh, you one. know, it's good. It's good. It's good. good place yeah. For them. I'm just again, I'm just baffled by how small it is, and yeah. you, you, there's no way you could binge a show or like watch, listen to the radio for hours at, uh, on a, uh, at, at end. I just, well, they'd either know. be doing it without a shelter, right? Or what, now they have no, one. That's a good point. In their tent or in there, so. Yeah. I just, he said, you know, a lot of people drive around and look at LA and think blah. Um, have, have you guys driven that underpass at the 170 in North Hollywood? Mm -hmm. Even with all those little houses, uh, I don't live too far from there. It is shocking. It is like, it is like Gower here in Hollywood. It is, it is atrocious, the living conditions. And I know this has cleaned it up a little bit, but, um, Mr. Mayor, this is just one small fraction of the problem Very small slither. in the rest of LA. And I know he knows that, but we're still going to drive around and think that until things get better. Yep. Yep. A warning. Well, I just wonder, what do you do? Like, do they reach a point where there's so many houses available? Right. And eventually, you know, obviously with Skid Row, we have a judge who has made an order that says everybody has to have a house. Like we have to offer housing to everybody. But as we saw in Echo Park, not everybody wants to go into housing. There's all kinds of reasons that people who right, are experiencing like homelessness saying, don't want to go. Especially if there are restrictions. Mm -hmm. Don't want to go into, into, into housing, into shelters, if they have pets, if they have uh, you know belongings or things like that, or if there's some sort of treatment that um, if they're suffering from some kind of addiction or mental health that you know you can't force people into treatment, right? It's just, we don't have that. We don't, we don't institutionalize people they have rights, et cetera, um, if they don't want to be. So I, I guess I wonder, you know, when you do spend the money to do this and you start building more homes like this, uh, you know, will we be watching closely to see if it works or what are the other alternatives for people who just don't want to go into housing? Do we then say, all right, now we're going to bolster mental health support. Now we're going to bolster uh, addiction treatment and stuff like that. I haven't heard a lot of focus on that. The mayor is very focused on just building more houses because that's really, as far as he's concerned, he thinks is the majority of the problem here. Right. Housing, and, housing, housing. Right. And uh, I wish we had, we were preempted a couple days ago when we were talking about the new housing commission, 
that the super board of supervisors has been tasked to put together uh that would be a whole nother show when we talk about that <laughs> that problem because the mayor in his list of five reasons for homelessness does not address a couple things that are just blindingly obvious and again it just feels so it feels so political these are human beings and there's no one solution yeah. there's no one answer to this problem